Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Coffee with Father James. I am in one of our confessionals here at St. Peter's Church, and I have my coffee. I've never had coffee inside a confessional before, so here goes. Mmm, it tastes delicious. Everything, everything is better when, you in, when you're in the confessional. <laughs> you may be thinking, why is he in the confessional? Well, I want to talk to you about truth and reconciliation. And truth and reconciliation is something that is the heart of what this space is about. Uh, truth and reconciliation with the Lord. People come here to the sacrament to speak the truth in the context of a deeper truth, the deeper truth of God's mercy and God's grace, that God desires to forgive and give life. God, does, God is merciful, God is loving and simply waits for us to come into his arms. God has open hands, open heart. And we come here in the context of that grounding truth to speak the truth. Uh, another dimension of the truth, and that is that we are broken, uh, we are sinful, we do things that we know are not right, we say things that we know are not right, we think things, and also the fact that we do we don't do and we don't think and we don't say things that we should have done. So sins of omission, sins of commission. And so we speak that truth and these two truths collide. The truth of our brokenness, our sinfulness, our need for mercy and the truth of God's merciful love. And in that collision we have reconciliation. That's why we call this the sacrament of reconciliation. And this coming Friday uh, we will be having the sacrament of reconciliation all day from 9.30 to 6 p.m. It's a a, a real tradition during the season of Advent to, to seek to prepare the, the stable of our hearts to receive Jesus in, in a new way. So I'm extending an invitation to all of our parishioners to, to try to come out uh, this coming Friday to experience the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And if you're unable to do it then, we still have the Sacrament available on Saturdays. Uh, before the 4 p.m. Mass or by appointment, just call us at the parish office. Now, I'm also here because of another meaning of truth and reconciliation. And for that, you have to come with me to my next place. I'm just going to leave this behind. I'm going to take my coffee and uh, just follow me for a second. So, right next door, to the confessional is this, this prayer nook, um, small chapel. I don't know what you call this, but there's a lot of beautiful things in, the, in this nook. There are the two wood carvings, uh, two Flemish wood carvings that come from the original St. Peter's Church, the wooden church, and these carvings themselves are possibly uh, 16th century even. 16th or 17th century wood carvings, one of Christ, the Savior of the world, Salvator Mundi, and the other of St. Peter with the, with the keys. And we have here behind us the, 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 the black statue of the Madonna of our Blessed Mother, which was blackened when the original church on this site burned to the ground in Christmas of 19, I think it was 1967. It was, yeah, I think it was 1967 and the, the statue was, was saved, and, but it, it was blackened by, by the suit. And behind me is this modern representation of the same image that's on my coffee cup. In case you were wondering what cup I was using, this is the Our Lady of Guadalupe coffee cup. And uh, the image here was represented by an artist in a, in a modern way. Um, some people love this image, this particular version of the image. Some people don't like it at all. Uh, <laughs> so that's a personal thing. But I want to speak to you about another type of truth and reconciliation in the context of Our Lady of Guadalupe. As Canadians, we know that truth and reconciliation has, a, has another meaning for us. It was the name of the report that was made after the commission of investigation into the system of, of residential schools and the whole history of the relationship between our Canadian government and the Aboriginal peoples of this land, Aboriginal people 
and, and, and Métis people. Uh, the title Truth and Reconciliation was taken from the, a similar investigation that happened in South Africa uh, as they sought to bring reconciliation to, to that land through you know, facing the truth of their history. And that's what we tried to do in Canada. The report uh, is a very uh, detailed report, multiple volumes, but there is a summary report which a year ago when the headlines came out about the, the uh, potential grave sites that were discovered, uh, I actually read that report. It's about 360 pages. That's the summary report. It's actually a really good read. I highly recommend it. You just go on uh, onto the internet and Google Truth and Reconciliation Report and you'll find the PDF and you, you can read that as well. Now, in this past year, a lot has happened with this regard, both at the government level and within the church as we seek to uh, face the truth of our own complicity in an unjust system, uh, where we move from a, a long established practice in church relations with Aboriginal peoples of, of moving from a place of inculturation where we sought to take the truths of the gospel in our Christian faith and, and, and inculturate them into the, the cultures that the church was engaging with. And that's the ancient practice to move from that to one of assimilation, which seeks not to preserve the culture, but to destroy the culture. Um, and that was one of the core injustices at the root of, of this system, not the only one for sure. In this past year, we've seen the Holy Father come to Canada to make uh, an apology. Uh, we've seen a lot, of, uh, a lot of work that's been done at different levels within the church. At our own parish of Our Lady of Guadalupe, you know, we remember that our, the patroness of our parish is, is uh, this, this, this woman. Now, I said in the past that she was an Aboriginal woman, but uh, many of the, of the Latino members of our parish, including those from Mexico, told me that I, I was wrong. She's actually not Aboriginal. She is uh, mis, mis, Mestiz, I think it is, Mestiz, which is the Spanish version of Métis. Uh, that basically the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, she's of mixed race. Um, she, she's a, a blending of Aboriginal culture and European culture. And in one sense, it almost makes this, this image even more powerful as we seek to face the truth of our past, but also to be reconciled. About a year ago, a uh, little over a year ago, we promised that we would have some kind of gathering as a parish to explore this issue in more detail. I haven't forgotten that promise that was made. And over the last year, as we've been waiting for, um, you know, the, the Holy Father's visit and to see what would happen, uh, we've, we've been in conversation. And I'm pleased to tell you that we, are, we have an event that is planned and it's gonna take place on the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Monday, December 12th, here in this church from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. What's going to happen? We've invited uh, three members of the Mi'kmaq community here in Nova Scotia, or Mi'kma'ki. Uh, one a woman from, from Member 2 in Cape Breton, a man from, from uh, Shubenacadie, uh, and a man who lives in Amherst, who each have their particular perspectives and stories and history of experiencing injustice and prejudice and, and exposure to the residential school system who have faced that truth and have also experienced a degree of reconciliation. They're wonderful people, and the, the three of them are going to be joining us here at the parish, and we're going to have uh, an evening of presentations. I've asked each of them to speak for 15 minutes, and I've invited Dr. David Dean uh, from Atlantic School of Theology, who is a member of our parish, to also speak at, at the end for 15 minutes. And at that point, we'll open things up for uh, question and answer, for uh, people to make comments, and to, to have a bit of a panel discussion, and to finish the evening uh, with, a, with a sense of prayer. I've spoken to each of the participants, and they're looking forward to being a part of this, that it may truly be an evening where we experience truth, as difficult and as painful as that may be, and also that we experience reconciliation, not just reconciliation with one another, but reconciliation with the Lord. So, Friday, this coming Friday, December 2nd, for the Sacrament of Reconciliation, and Monday, December 12th, for Truth and Reconciliation. God bless.